This is the wagon you're going to be building, which is the slate open wagon. Simple four wheel 16 millimeter wagon with simple hook couplings. Nothing fancy about this one, nice and easy to build. Comes with binny wheels, brass axles running in four ball races, so it's nice and smooth to run. Not a lot of detail, but enough to give it a realistic look. Very straightforward to build. Um, as you can see, it runs very smoothly. Uh, I'm going to have to keep my finger on there to keep it there. Comes with a three link coupling, which I'll just find. I had it running away. There we are, it's stationary now. So three link coupling, which will go on to there. Also supplied with a single link coupling so that you can couple up to other similar wagons. Um, hope you enjoy building. Straightforward, shouldn't be any problems at all. Thank you very much. This is the parts list for building the open style slate wagon. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's all the parts there. So it's a very straightforward build. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we'll just put to side the things we don't need initially. Right, some things to bear in mind is that there is a, on this piece, a small cutout as you can see. And adjacent to that cutout are two small cutouts where the support goes for the braking system. And there is correspondingly on this part also a cutout. Now that cutout is not halfway, so that's important to remember. So that point, that part there lays onto there, but it needs to be done so you can see the engraving and the cutouts line up. Obviously they don't, so you have to manoeuvre it around until you reach a point where the actual cutouts do line up. So those two parts go together, that will only happen in one place. So that's the one point to remember. And then this part, which is one millimetre, shiny on one side and that on the other, goes on top of the part. So you end up with that effect there. I hope that makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and glue those three together. And for that, we we'll use a PVA glue. We don't need to use too much. So the first thing first is to glue these two together. Again, double check, cut out lines up with each other and you can actually see the lines. Now it's best to actually glue this piece. So again, it doesn't need much. Just a few little dobs. And then spread it around with your finger. And then offer this piece on. Again, check you've got the cutout lines up. And then if you just sort of keep pushing it down onto a flat surface, keep rotating it. It's important that everything lines up. And then when you're happy, give it a gentle squeeze. You should find that you can manoeuvre it a little bit with your fingers 
That's the beauty of PVA glue. Are you happy? We can then add the next part, which goes on to that first. That's that face there. Again, this can go either way around, makes no difference, it's symmetrical. And what we do is, of you want the shiny side up though. So again, I'll put a little bit of PVA glue. Doesn't want much. And slip it around with your finger. And then don't forget, I want to see the shiny side up. Drop him on and do the same process as we did before. Keep rotating it. Right, so having glued that pack together, we can now start to glue the top half together. Now that consists of a base, which is that part there, the ends and the sides. Now the ends have a little cut out, a little tab which goes into the small cutout there. So we just build up a square. You'll need an elastic band for this, it will help. Again, these are symmetrical, so it's easy to get the wrong one in the wrong place. You can see that there is an engraving and then doesn't quite go to the top. So that is the top. It's the, the same with, obviously with these, you can't get it around the wrong way because of the tab underneath. So in fact, if you look from the side, it will in fact go like that. You can see the lines line up. You can put it that way, but obviously that's the wrong way round. As you can see, the lines don't line up. So we put the end one in, remembering to put the engraving facing out. And I make sure that's facing up. And if you do the same with the other one, the other side. fiddly doing this and again the end one once you've got all four there you'll find that it will put itself in and stay together and then take an elastic band and put that round that pack which will hold that in situ You'll find that this part here will drop down inside. So we can now go ahead and glue that in position. Now for this I use a super glue, although also you could use a PVA if you wanted, but we have to use a very small amount of super glue. The reason we have to go careful with the super glue is that in the side once it's finished, oops, we haven't glued it on yet. We have the innards to go in, which gives you a box section on the inside. So bear in mind that it's not all glued together yet. Pick it up by the underside, make sure we're all pushed together, and then very gently add a small bit of super glue into each corner. Doesn't want a lot. 
just enough so it sort of wicks up through the joint. And do that in all four corners. Just give that a few minutes to dry. Won't take long. And then you need to just make sure that it's all joined, that part is actually joined down to the base. So for that, just a little bit of super glue into. Those areas there. And just a little bit where the tab is. And do the same the other end. That'll be sufficient to hold that on there. Now we can add the internals. Now the internals, the end piece of the sides, are a sloppy fit, but the ends are a nice fit. So again, if you look at the outside, because this can go up the wrong way because one panel is bigger than the other. So if you imagine it's on the outside and we're going to line up with the top, then you can see the actual lines don't line up. If I turn it over, you'll find they do. Therefore, it's the big panel that goes up. As you can see, and we put that in using a white PVA glue. So the best way to do this, again, is a very small amount. Again, make sure the big panel is facing up. And if you put it in one corner and just pivot it round and squeeze and push all the way around, you'll find that goes in quite nicely. Again, we do the same the other end. Again, check you've got the big panel facing up. panel up into a corner, spin it round and push it in against the end. And then we can do the side panels the same. Again you'll notice there's a big and a small and we use the same process as we did there. Panel up into the corner and rotate it round and push it home. If any glue does ooze up, just wipe it off with your finger or a damp, damp rag. And you can do the same with the other side.
big panel facing up. That's the inside of the truck done. We can now remove the elastic band and we can now put the coverings on the outside. Now the way the coverings go, you'll notice that there are two sizes. I'll just bring them up so you can see. You'll see there is a, a thin one where the bolt holes or bolts are slightly offset to one side and then you've got a thicker one where the bolt holes are in the middle. As you can see there's a difference there. So we'll call that the big one and we'll call that the small one. Right, the actual holes or bolt holes are also offset in one direction so that's up so when you put them on you need to put it on so that the small gap is at the top when it's that end like I've done that end you can see that the actual two holes or two bolts go central to the plank and central to the plank if I put it the other way up on the other side it wouldn't be central so to give you an idea that obviously that's going to work there because that's central but if I was to put this one on there you can see that the actual holes would be in the wrong place so that's an important bit to bear in mind so I'll just do this end having already done the other end So again, holes to the left, or bolts to the left, and towards the top when we go into this corner here. We put in our reference. Line it up. And push down. A bit of glue on there. there we are. Now you can see that the actual bolts are central to the plank. So we do the one on the other side. Right, now we can do the end pieces. Now the end pieces, again, want to make sure that the bolts are, the gap is small as at the top. So in fact, if you look on the side, they should line up. So we'll do that one first. This time they line up on the outside. You can use uh, one of these just as a, a method of holding it there so you can push it up against it. Check the height, lines up with the one on the other side, push them down. And I'm also just using this as a reference. So now do the one on this side or this end. Again, we need to check it's run the right way. Use 
one of these again as a reference. end I've moved that one on the end a bit naughty that's because I didn't wait for it to dry there we go let's reset that one so we then come to this end same process facing up flat areas of reference and the last one That's that bit completed. Now we can move over and start to do the underside. So we'll put that to one side to dry and we can start to work on the wheel assembly. Oh, sorry camera, didn't mean to move you. Take a bearing, a two millimetre wide looks like a clock, old fashioned clock, and a four millimetre wide again looks like an old fashioned clock. And what we have to do is to insert the bearing into the small one and then into the big one, as I've done there. And if you do that on all four, so that's into the small, into the big, into the small, into the big. into the small and into the big and if you just push down on the flat face you'll find that will align all the parts together and then the next thing we have to do is to actually glue in the bearing again we do this with super glue it's the same process I use on all my bearings just take a bit of super glue and you just run it around the bottom part of the bearing. And that will wick in. Put that to one side. You need to do that on all of them. Don't glue the two pieces of wood together yet though. We'll come to that in a minute. And we put that to whoops. And we put that to one side to dry for the moment. While that's drying, we can move on and do the coupling side. Couplings are straightforward. Uh, you can see there's a hole and a hole. Each coupling, that part goes into the hole. We'll do a dry run first of all, that one into the hold and then we'll glue on the two millimeter thick support on each end 
and then we finally add the cap with the arrow facing out. So we'll do that. So we start off by adding just a little bit of super glue into one of the holes. And then drop the coupling in. Make sure it's lined up in a straight line. And then use a little tissue. Just remove any excess glue. And then take the white PVA glue. And we don't want an awful lot of this. Just a small amount. And put that either side of the coupling. And then slide on the one with the slot and push that down. It should be smooth at the back and remove any excess that's showing through on the front. And then a little bit more PVA on top into the, the gap where the coupling is. Into the gap where the coupling is, and then with the small one millimeter one with the arrow, drop him on, line it up, and push down, and just clean up any excess glue that's showing through. And then repeat that the other end. A little bit of glue into the hole, super glue. Drop the coupling in. Remove any excess. PVA each side. the slot, remove excess, put more PVA into the hole, then add the one millimeter one, push down, Make sure it lines up the one underneath. Again, any excess, just remove. That's the coupling done. So now we can move on to the, the wheels. Okay, so what we now have to do with these is uh, we have supplied with it as a jig. So this is the little jig. So we'll put that to one side for the moment. And you're going to need the one, two, three, four overlays. The four that we've just super glued the axles into, got the bearings into. And you're going to need the four axle box covers. Right. So what we have to do is to glue all of this together. So we can now take those apart. So we have to glue that one to that one. And then we have to glue this one over the gap. So we'll go through a dry run first of all. So we add a little bit of glue there, and then we push him on. We push him down onto a flat surface so it lines up. Then we put a bit of white glue on there. And we offer that on. And then while we hold that there, we take the jig 
and we slide the whole lot in and we push down at the back and in that direction and that one down and you can see that everything will line up so I'll run through one of those so you can see what we're actually doing just get the glue off my finger so we get some PVA glue Sorry camera. And we put some PVA glue on there. And we drop in the bearing, pushing down onto a flat surface. So we're flat along the bottom. And then a bit of PVA glue on the bottom. Just a touch on the top, and we offer that up. It's a little bit slippery at the moment, and then we drop that into the jig and we push it down, push them both down, and then push it in that direction, and then squeeze the top. So we've made up a sandwich and we hold that for about five ten seconds not too long otherwise we'll end up gluing it to the jig and then when we're happy just gently take him out and then using a, a chopstick or a cocktail stick or a knife just gently go around and remove any excess glue that's come through and it's really important to remove any excess glue on this side as we need a flat surface here when we come to glue this in so we can now move on to the next one and do exactly the same So we add a bit of glue, push them in, down onto a flat surface, the glue along there, a little bit at the top, one with the cover. Into the jig, push down again, make sure they're all pushed down firmly and in that direction make sure it lines up and then just squeeze. And I'll drop him out. As before, any excess glue, remove. Not forgetting to remove it from this side as well. Now add the axle box covers. Again, very straightforward. Just a touch of super glue in the circle, which marks where it goes, and drop them in and maneuver it around until it lines up with the circle. Bit of pressure. We can do the next one. Right, so we thoroughly need to let that dry. We can get the other parts ready. So we've got the internal brake support. 
make sure that the hole is there and then you've got the outside support again just pop out make sure that the uh, the hole is there and you have to break the lever and we'll now move on to actually fitting the wheels but before we do that we have to do a little bit of oiling so if we turn them all over and you need to add some lubrication into that area there on each one we do this now rather than earlier on otherwise the oil will get on the bearings and it won't actually glue itself in so just wipe off any excess so that's giving them a bit of a lubrication right now we have to actually fit the bear fit the wheels and bearings now we'll do a dry run first you can see what we're going to do take an axle and you slot over one set of wheels like one bearing as you can see i've done there and then just put your finger on it like i'm holding there and then you put one on the other side and push that on with your thumb and then line them up now this is where the line marks come into play that are engraved on here we actually load it on as i've done there and then you move it up and down until it lines up with the engraving marks and then you'll push it down you'll find the wheels will rotate if they're a bit stiff then just prise it out slightly so you see so putting a slight lean on it until the wheels rotate there's a very slight bit of movement so that's what we're going to do but before we do that we do need to fit this part if i remember correctly because if we don't fit this part first we find that the actual wheels get in the way so we'll come back to that in a minute so we'll put him to one side and we'll actually fit the brake gear now you'll find there's some engraving on there so the engraving faces out it goes on the same side as the cutout there and if you look inside you'll see there's a little cutout there and there and that takes those two points there so that goes in like that it's fairly straightforward so it sort of self aligns itself so we can do that with some white pva glue We just put a little bit on the bottom of each one. So I'm just going to put some there and some there. And then we put some on the inside. A little bit on the bottom. And then that goes into there. It goes down as far as it'll go, so it touches the one underneath. And you should find the hole is flush or the hole is flushed or in line with that particular surface there so now we can go ahead and do the wheels again to do the wheels we use the pva we've already done a dry run so when everything works all right so the play way we do this is pick up the wheels as we have them and we're going to put some pva glue on that surface and a bit on the, that surface there it doesn't need an awful lot we do the same that side so then we turn it round and we drop it down onto our marks like we did with the dry run and then we just sort of gently maneuver it backwards and forwards and then we squeeze in from the side and push down and you'll find the glue will lose out make sure the wheels rotate and just hold a bit of pressure there 
a bit of movement side to side, which is okay. And then we just check on the outside, any white PVA glue that's showing, just remove it. Again, double check that we're lined up with the marks. And then we can turn around and do the same with the other side. So again, we load him on. We load the one on the other end. Hold them together. Do a dry run. Drop him on. Line up the marks. Bit of pressure. The wheels are tight, a bit tight, so just pull it apart. There we go. So we now do that one exactly the same. Again, get your PVA glue. A little bit on the inside and up the side. Load him down. Again, line him up on the marks. And squeeze. If he's a bit tight, just ease them out a little bit. Keep us in down pressure. And you'll reach a point where all of a sudden they'll just spin freely. And again, as before, remove any excess glue. to add the handle. So that's this part here gets glued to the outside, drops into that slot there. Put the white PVA glue again into that area. Slide him on. And we'll have the brake handle in a moment. Also supplied in the kit are some 3D printed parts. We have a brake handle and four pieces of strapping which go on the end of the buffers. So we'll deal with the strapping first of all. Simply slots over the bits that stick out there. Now it will go only one way. You've got to play around with it until in the end it will slip over. So there's something like eight combinations of putting this on. So obviously you can go that side four positions. We can turn it over and it can go four positions. You'll find that it will in fact only go easily in one direction. So it's a case of playing around until it starts to go and then it'll be fairly obvious how it does go. So that's those two done. We'll just line them up so they're flush on the end. And we'll do this end. That one the first time. It's because when this is 3D printed, there's a slight taper done to it. And that's not an exact square, it's an oblong. It's, uh, it's not that difficult to sort out. It also will fit depending on how well you've actually done these parts. 
I'm struggling with this one. No, there we go. And then once they're on there, just to make sure they stay there, is to add just a tiny bit of super glue along the bottom edge. So I just put a little piece along there, a little bit of glue there, there. just stop those coming off. Now we can move on to doing the brake handle. Now the brake handle goes on the side and goes into that location there. Also supplied with the kit is a little tiny washer. There we go, there's a little washer. Now the first thing to do is to take a pair of pliers the pin, I don't know if we can see this, because the pin is a tight fit into the brake. So with the brake lever in that direction, the pin wants to come through from the back. So offer him up and then just slowly twist it backwards and forwards and you'll find that in the end it will actually go through as I've shown there. And then take your washer and slide that over and then we load all of that through the hole on the outside through the hole on the inside and then push it have to put your finger on the inside as well so it's a fairly tight fit and just slide it in until it's a flush fit on the outside you may have a bit of wire poking through on the inside it doesn't matter and then it's up to you where you decide you want the brake lever to be so when you're happy with its position Add a blob of super glue to the outside so that will wick down in. And then I tend to apply some on the underside, some where the rod is on both sides. So that then completes the wagon. I supply two types of coupling. You have the normal three link one, which obviously you're very familiar with. We also supply a single link one, which is this one here, which will allow you to couple up to similar wagons as these without a huge gap in between. The choice is yours, which you use. So there we go, that completes the open wagon. Makes quite a nice little vehicle. Uh, obviously quite a few of those behind an engine look quite nice but I would say that wouldn't I then you buy more but thank you very much for building and thank you for watching the video